Played for six years in the NFL. He's now an analyst for San Diego State football and part of the most listened to sports talk radio show in San Diego. Rich Orenberger is joining us live. He's on Fox Sports Radio Saturdays. Guy works nonstop. He's your typical offensive lineman after retirement. He's just grinding and wrestling in the trenches, and we love him for it. All right, let's 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 first of all, let's talk about a team. You just told me during the break the Chargers are still the most watched team in San Diego. The people may be upset with the Spanos family, but all my buddies who are Charger fans, and I have several that live in San Diego or L.A., you love your team. You can't, If the Seahawks left tomorrow, my sister still loves the team, right? That's your team. And I look at the Brandon, yeah, it's- I look at the Brandon Staley situation. How is that down there? Like, when, when you look at the Chargers, you know them well. What do you make of the Brandon Staley, Herbert, Kellen Moore? What if they lose to Green Bay this weekend? If they lose to Green Bay this weekend, I, I don't know. I don't know what's next for Brandon Staley, but I can promise you, to your first point, yeah, this the, the Chargers in San Diego are still very, very much um, uh, watched and, and viewed. It's the, the highest viewed NFL network, or I should say NFL property in San Diego, obviously, but also it's the most watched sporting event in this county. Uh, you're right. Like, just because the team left, there are a lot of people who could divorce their hatred for the Spanos family, for what they did to the city or the county of San Diego, um, but still love the team and love the players. Also, remember, they brought Philip Rivers with him, yeah. uh, with them when they moved. Philip was beloved down here in San Diego, and he remained down here living in San Diego through the rest of his time playing for the Los Angeles Chargers. And then they moved on and drafted Justin Herbert, who a lot of people were like, yeah, and you know, I said it. I said after Philip left, I'd be done with them, but Herbert's pretty good. So I'm just going to hang in there for a little bit longer. (laughs) And, you know, that kind of brings you back to Brandon Staley because yeah, Herbert's really good. In fact, objectively, if you look at his, his measurables, the guy's great and he's being wasted. So if they continue to lose, I mean, you're putting a Band-Aid on a gushing wound at this point, and, and a move needs to be made eventually. Yeah, I, I think if they lose to Green Bay and Jordan Love, uh, when you have the gap of quarterback talent in that game, I think the Spanoses and Telesco would have to sit up front of the plane on the way home and have a long discussion. So you played uh, for the Patriots for years, and, and I said last year I heard there was a, uh, a disagreement between an offensive lineman, I know who it is, it'll go unnamed, that confronted Mac Jones on the cheap shots. Uh, this is, but, I, but I said this, it's a grumpy staff. It's Bill O'Brien, it's Matt Patricia, it's Joe Judge. It's very old school, and I don't think it's a particularly great staff. They lost Adams, they lost Skarnekia, they lost Josh McDaniels. It's an old school staff that barks. It's not progressive. It's not young. It's not the rammed. It, that's not what it is. I think Max got something. It's not special, but it's something. Do you think the Patriots draft a quarterback if they land at three, four, or two in the draft? Oh, that's the only way that Bill Belichick could potentially justify staying in New England. I, that would be my plan if I'm Bill. I would say, look, we're going to go to the draft. We're going to find our next Tom Brady, because what else can you say to Robert Kraft? You guessed wrong on Mac Jones, taking him 15th overall. A lot of people had him much lower than that draft slot. And the Patriots are famous for this. They've done that many times over, taking a guy way ahead of when he was supposed to or getting a bargain on a player who's sliding. Um, But this one didn't work out. You know, Mac Jones, to your point, I think has some talent. I think he can play in this league. I don't think it's working inside that system. It's not a system fit. And there are a lot of offensive-minded coaches now who will curtail their offense to the player. Think Doug Peterson with Trevor Lawrence. He's trying to make it work with his skill set. Think Jalen Hurts with Nick Sirianni. He's trying to make it work with his skill set. Think of what's going on with Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator in Detroit with Jared Goff. It's the best he's ever looked. He's, he's trying to curtail the offense around his strengths and avoid his weaknesses. What Mac Jones is trying to do is still fill the Hall of Fame shoes that were left by the back door when Tom Brady went down to Tampa Bay. And it's impossible for him to do. So they need to find either A, somebody who can, or B, change the system and make it more curtailed to their quarterback's talent. You know, uh, you had Nick Sirianni. Uh, you were on a staff. He was a, a Charger as, uh, as, assistant. 
And I thought he butchered his opening press conference. But I think they are now one of the smartest, most situationally efficient teams in the league. And I acknowledge I've never been more wrong on a coach. Dan Campbell, I knew, had a little bit of a physical presence. It's like a Vrabel Tomlin thing. Like players love Campbell. And I and I I, I could see that being okay. Sirianni to me looked like he wasn't ready to be a position coach. You knew him before we'd heard of him. Are you surprised at not only winning, but how they win? The, the brotherly shove, the innovation, the efficiency situationally. Are you taken back by it? I mean, in some ways, for sure. Uh, but in other ways, he was an idea guy. You know, he helped support that offense with, you know, Ken Wisenhunt when he was the head coach and then Frank Reich when he became the offensive coordinator, after, or I should say with Ken Wisenhunt when he was the OC, he left for the Tennessee job. Frank Reich be became the offensive coordinator and he was supporting him and his staff. Uh, he was an idea guy. So he would help see what the defense was offering and how to attack the defense. And I agree with you. When first shot out of the cannon, when he had that opening press conference, oh, God. and a lot of people were like, what is going on? It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, I, you know, you ever have like that secondhand embarrassment where you're like cringing. You're like, Oh, please, please just survive the rest of this sentence. But I'll tell you what, he made a recovery because he got in front of that team. And as we know this Colin, as everybody who's ever played the sport knows it, it doesn't matter what anybody on the outside thinks. It matters what the 53 in that locker room think. And if you can win over that locker room and you can prove to them that you're intelligent, which he is, and you can prove to them that you're a good leader, which he is, and you can prove them that you can take what you have and make it into something special, which he's done, man, you could go out and win Super Bowls. And they came a game away or a couple of plays away from doing it a season ago. Um, I got to ask you, and I just want, I'm not even going to preface it with anything. Uh, I have been pro Harbaugh because I do think there's some sort of advanced scouting. I, I, I think it could matter, I, but I think it's more about J.J. McCarthy and, and, you know, Michigan's got good players and they've all, this is their team, best team. But, but your takeaway top to bottom on the punishment, the crime going forward, where are you on Harbaugh in Michigan? So if he's guilty of being complicit and involved in something that was, you know, conspiratorial, right, where behind the scenes there were phone calls and plane tickets and, you know, video camera and equipment being sent out to different, you know, opponents' games to film and all that stuff. Well, yeah, okay. Then all of a sudden we have a very different looking type of scandal on our hands. But if this was as simple as somebody on his staff kind of going off half cocked on his own. And there was an understanding that something was happening here that wasn't completely above board, but they were getting away with it. I have a hard time with the punishment being all that steep because guess what? All of these coaches who are belly aching out loud about this, it kind of feels like they're living in glass houses. And if the microscope was shined on their programs, maybe we would find some stuff. Every team is guilty of doing some things that, you know, hover in that gray area that go up against the borders of, you know, is it cheating or is it allowed? Is it is it OK to do this or is this completely? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a margin there. And I think every single coach who's having success at any level is finding where the margins are. Maybe Jim Harbaugh did it the best. Or if you look at his roster top to bottom, and you compare it to the rest of college football, and you say, you know, do they have the Johnnies and Joes? The answer is yes. Do they run a great offense? And, and really, like we were just talking about, they, they feature the things that their offensive players do well? Sure. Are they dominant on the defensive side of the ball? Can they get after the passer? Can they turn over the football? Can they possess the football with a lead? Can they come back in games? All of that is true. Can they beat good teams on the road? Well, guess what? Without Jim Harbaugh, they just did that in Beaver Stadium with everybody watching. So, yeah, I understand the Big Ten felt like they needed to do something, but you can't tell me a two-week investigation yield them all the information they need to suspend them for three games. It kind of felt like everybody had their pitchforks out and something need to, needed to be done. So Tony Petiti, the commissioner of the league, did something thing and Harbaugh accepts the punishment and then this story goes away for a little while hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.